Hi everybody, this is Sam with Python Basics, and we are going to be working again back with uh, Pygame, and more specifically, the font module. And we're going to look at sys, the sysfont function, and that's going to create a font object. So alright, this can be a little daunting, annoying, perplexing, however you want to think about it. So all right, first we need to import Pygame. So let's do that. And then actually, I almost completely forgot to uh, do su something super, super, super important is to initiate. Okay, you can see me and I'm recording. Okay, sorry guys. All right, in it. All right, to initiate everything. All right, so everything is initiated. So this is what we're going to look at. I'm going to spread this out over here. All right, so dir.pygame.font. So all right, this can be, as I want you to, let's run help on this. So, all right, this is, um, we did a deep dive on help. Let me put this here so you can see it. It's episode 276, excuse me, 275. And let's put it here. And it's the deep dive for help and dir. So, all right, let's run this again. Pygame.font. So I want you to look really, really hard here so, all right we run this and we don't see it but it's one of these that's here so here are our font objects and here's our sys font function and there it is so, all right let's now run it and see what it does and see what it needs and what it expects from us before it creates the object all right. Um, help. Dot pi game. Dot font. Dot sys font and close. So all right. And I do want to show you this. So it actually lives in its own module. And I know this can be weird, but. This is how libraries evolve, and I want to remind you about your deep dive and use the skills that you have from that to find and learn and look. So this happens to live in two separate places. So I'll show you. So it lives in the Pygame sys font, which is right here. So let's do dir on just Pygame. Uh, Where'd it go? S Y sys font. There we go. So then we run help on pi game dot sys font. Whoops, get my cursor out of the way. So I can read and you can read it too. It, there it is right here. It's okay. And it has a then it has the methods that go to that object but all right let's go ahead and just create our own right here so we're gonna do text oh I forgot to tell you what you need to look for let's bring this back over here so all right this is going to it will search the fonts in the system and we learned how to do that last time with get font method all right so it needs to remind you anything with equal signs are optional so it has to have see here's boom right here this is how we call it pygame font dot sys font so all right it expects the name of the font that you want and the size these other arguments are optional okay and it will always return a valid 
font object. So if, if you give an invalid, it will go and fall back to a default. So it has a default. So all right, let's do that now. So we're going to do text equals pygame dot font dot sys font dot times new roman it's got to be a string and then let's do 20 font 20 so all right let's run this oops let's see and this has to be capital and we know that here because and these are case sensitive so capital s capital f capital s capital f and there we go and then in text our font font object and then we run a help on our text object and lo and behold it is it is and here we can even run type on our text and it is a font font object so all right that is how you create the font object let's see where we are on time all right six minutes that we're gonna wrap this up but I this is an example of how a function can be buried in a library and I want to remind you how to go about looking for it make sure you're reading all the documentation thoroughly so remember high game you knew about the font and you ran this Oop, let's do dir high game dot font and you saw these up here ahead so these look like objects and lo and behold we ran help on this and we found out that that was our function so that is that and then we also learned what arguments it had to have and the optional arguments so it took two arguments we gave them this had to be a string and this was an integer and we created our object now that's that I've rambled on for a minute so I apologize but as always thanks for watching don't forget to click that like and subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet let's go ahead and do that and most important click that notification bell and if you have any comments questions or if you didn't quite get this please drop a comment down below and I'll get to it have been getting some awesome awesome feedback so thank you everybody for the comments super helpful helping the community out and just want to say thank you again Stay tuned. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys.